What's going on? Welcome back to Mobile Custom Creations. For this build, we're going to be making a patterned plywood box out of Baltic birch plywood. So first step, after we cut it down to a manageable size, we're going to cut them into one inch strips, as you can see here. So once the strips were cut, I flipped them on their side and glued the tops together. Once they dried, I cut them at a 45 degree angle on my table saw in order to get them in that angle that you'll see later in order to create the herringbone shape. And I just cut them to one inch strips like before. So after the strips were cut, I took each of the pieces and sanded them down. Uh, this allows them to be glued easier together and also makes the finishing uh, somewhat easier when I'm using the palm sander after this. Uh, but I had to take the guard off because the pieces were just a little too long. So the reason we cut them on a 45 is this way we could alternate them to create that herringbone pattern that I was looking for. And as you can see there, uh, it, one did break apart, but that kind of happens with the plywood. So I just glued it back together. Uh, but then it, you just turn them on the side and it's rinse and repeat. You're going to go and glue the top with what I use type on three. We're just going to lather these bad boys up and then I'm going to spread them out with my finger turn them back on their side and place push them together and clamp them up So now that the glue dried, um, it'll end up looking like that piece right there, but I have to first scrape the glue off, sand them and then I'm going to square the edges up on the table saw, cut off those pointed pieces, and make it look more like a square piece. And then you'll see me square it up here in a second. So here I'm measuring out the cuts uh, for the rest of the sides of the box. I'm going to cut these down the middle. Obviously I'm going to have a longer side and a shorter side because it's a rectangle. Uh, here I'm going to be turning the blade to a 45 degree angle. This way it'll make a nice seamless look to the edge of the box. One problem that I ran into was that there's a lot of tear out with the plywood, uh, but I'll show you how I'm going to deal with that. And then from here, I'm cutting out some rabbits. So basically I just made an area that was easier to clean out with the chisel. Uh, this creates uh, an area where, as you can see, the bottom of the box is going to sit flush and it actually makes it easier on glue up because it keeps it in a square, but the bottom will be glued in afterwards. Then for this, you use the tape and glue method. You're going to tape all the edges together and put glue in between on those 45s in order to secure it. Uh, I do recommend using better tape than what I use. The tape didn't really hold that well, but it worked out enough. 
So in order to cover out the tear out on the edges, I decided to cut out some rabbits with some maple. Uh, this is in order to make some legs for the box. And what I'm doing here is cutting a long strip with the blade, turning it 90 degrees, and then cutting another strip so this removes a chunk of the wood, as you'll see in a second. And then here's the rabbits in the bottom, and as you can see, I cut out another piece of plywood in order to sit flush. And in this one, you can see how the rabbits um, actually cover the edges of the box where the tear out would be. And conveniently enough, the double S legs. So here I'm marking out the underside of the box, basically where I'm going to be creating a little ledge um, in order to allow the box uh, to sit snug, at least the top, and then the top won't slide off. So I cut out an inch by inch by whatever the measurements were that I used uh, of maple and then cut it out of my miter saw. And in order to make the top snug so it didn't wobble from side to side, but yet there was still enough room uh, for movement within the wood, I used my digital uh, caliper, and then I'm going to make lines here to show where I'm going to be lining up those pieces of maple. So once the pieces were cut to size and glued, I went ahead and sanded them down with the belt sander. And just to make it flush, it was easier to mate with the lid of the box. Now it's as easy as glue and stick. I used the Gorilla Glue for a quick set time and then I used the wood glue in order to keep it in place after a, a while. Uh, this is for a stronger hold, so I flipped it over, placed it in between the lines, and then let it dry from there. Now in order to take the lid off, considering it's not a hinge top, I made a U-shaped handle that's going to sit on the roughly the middle. Uh, it's going to be using a combination of maple and another piece of the Baltic birch plywood that I, again, patterned. So here I'm measuring out the distance that I think would look well with the overall design. I don't remember the exact measurements. I think from the center line it's about an inch and a half both ways. So from the center line, I mark them out to the points where I'm going to be chiseling out a square hole um, in order to set those maple blocks or pieces within. So with each project, I try and do something different. And in, for this one, besides it being patterned plywood, I chiseled out a square hole in the top of the lid. So unfortunately without a dedicated camera, every time I'd hit the table, uh, since the camera was on a table, it would slide down. But I realized that before the end of this and I fixed it. Here's a piece of the pattern plywood that I cut to the same thickness as the maple upright pieces for the handle. And then all I'm going to do, since it's not cut to size yet, I'm going to glue it first and then cut it to size so there's less work to be done towards the end. So after it was cut to size, 
I went ahead and sanded the whole piece so this way it looks very nice uniform. Uh, glued it into the top. I used epoxy. Probably is not necessary. You could use glue. To fill those gaps, I used a tootski, I mean, uh, sawdust, and then used glue to fill those to make it look flush. Now for a musical outro. I want to say thanks for watching, everyone.